In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a chat room into your app built with Moving Cube. It's going to be a public chat, so any user that can access the app will be able to leave a message and read messages from other users. It is not meant to be for sending private messages among users. Imagine a user that leaves a message in the chat. He will probably open the app tomorrow or any other day just to check if somebody answered the message. That will help your app to increase a lot the number of ad impressions, so you will make more money. So let's begin. I already have my app prepared with only one screen, so I just need to drag and drop the chat element. It should be here on the Elements panel, but if you cannot find it, just click on the plus button, then find the chat element under the social section and install it. Then you just need to drag and drop it into the screen. From the Element Properties panel, we will configure anything related with our chat. But first, it is very important that we create a Firebase project and integrate it with our app. In case you don't know, Firebase is a set of tools for app developers provided by Google. With Firebase, you can, for example, send push notifications to your app, you can use Google Analytics, you can use databases, um, you can store digital files on the server, and you can manage users from your app, among a lot of other things. For our chat to work, we will need authentication, databases, and storage. So let me explain how to activate those things on Firebase. For using Firebase, you just need to have a free Google account. So log in, and then we need to create a project for our app. Click on Add New Project, enter a name for your project, and click on Continue. Then you can decide if you want to use Google Analytics into your app. Our Firebase project is now ready. So let's link it with our Moving Cube chat. Go back to Moving Cube, and here you can find two text inputs. One is for the Firebase API key, and the other one is for the Firebase project ID. You can find these values in your Firebase project. Go back to Firebase, click on Project Settings, find the project ID and copy it, then place it here. Then copy the web API key from the Firebase project and put it in the Firebase API key input field. The next thing is the chat ID. Here you can use any ID for your chat. It's only for you to identify the chat. In case you have multiple chats in your app, you can use different IDs so that all the messages from one chat are stored together. Then we have to set the maximum number of messages on the screen. Next, we need to go back to Firebase and activate the three tools our chat is going to need. The first one is going to be the authentication. This one is for managing users. We need this tool 
so that the app knows which messages were sent from each user. Here we have two options. In case we have a login screen in another part of our app, we can use the same users. But if we are not using a login screen, we will need to activate the anonymous signing method. So let's imagine we are not using a login screen in our app. We should go to sign in methods and activate the anonymous method. Next, we need to enable the database. Click on database. And now Firebase will offer two types of database that we can create. The first one is the Cloud Firestore. This is not the one we are going to use. So scroll down a little bit and find the real-time database and click on Create Database. Now select Test Mode and click on Enable. So the first thing, we need to add some data so that we make sure that Firebase keeps our database active. Click on the plus button and add some random value. It should have a name and a value. Now we can set the rules for our database. This will add some safety to our data. If you selected the test mode, these values will be true for read and write. But if you want to make them safer, just write the same thing I'm writing. This will tell the app only to accept messages from people using the app. Click on publish and that's all. And the last thing, we need to activate the storage for our files. In case users are sending pictures, they will be, need to be stored in the storage tool of Firebase. So go to storage, click on get started, and that's all. Well, now we have to select a location for our server. So you should choose the one closer to, our, to your users. Click on continue, and that's all. Here is where you will see all the pictures uploaded from the chat. Now our chat is ready to go. We could publish the app and our chat would work. But in case you want to change the styling of your chat, like the colors, the icons and other things, you can use the other tabs in the element properties panel. So from the second one, you can change the background or you can, send, you can change this, the background image and create some pattern. You can pick different sizes. We could change the send icon but I'm not going to do it right now. You should only click on File and then select a new icon. Okay, so on the third tab, we can change some styling for the bar, for the text input bar. So the, the, the area where we are going to send messages. You, you can say, change the background color, the text input background color, um, border color, the text color, and some other things like the sizing, the text size, margins, paddings. You can just play around a little bit and see what happens. In the next tab, you can change the style for the message bubbles. So those bubbles where you see the text that other users are sending. You can change the font. You can pick your own true type font if you want. Or you can change the um, corner radius for the bubbles, the text sizes, 
background colors, text colors, and some other values. In the fifth tab, you can change the menu. You can change the icon that will open the menu. You can also change the font for the text. You can change the size of the text. You can change margins. You can change paddings. You can change background colors and some other things. And finally, in the last tab, we can change the style of the pop-up window that will appear whenever the user enters the chat, but only if you're not using a login screen in your app. In that case, the app will need to ask for a username. Okay, so from here, we can change the style of that window. Uh, colors, fonts, text sizes, margins, and some other things. And that's all. That's all you need to know to put a chat into your Mobbing Cube app.